So up to this point, we've been talking about acids and bases and kind of their definitions. And this next section here is going to talk more about um, acids and bases in terms of quantifying how strong of an acid or how strong of a base they are. So um, a scale you're probably familiar with and talking about that is the pH scale. So we're going to talk about kind of the pH of solutions and kind of what that means and kind of how we figure out what a pH is. Um, so just as a reminder, we talked about water, how it can add as both an acid and a base, so it's amphoteric. Um, so you can imagine two waters could come together, one acting as an acid and the other one acting as a base. And what's going to happen is the acid is going to be a, a proton donor, right? Going get, to get rid of its uh, proton here. The base is going to be a proton acceptor, and it's going to form this. So what we have in this is when two waters come together, we're going to form a hydroxide ion, OH-, and a hydronium ion, or H3O+. Plus, right? So these are the two pieces that are going to come together um, when water kind of reacts with each other. So we can say it's water reacting with each other. Another way to think about it is a dissociation of water because what's really happening is you're dissociating that proton from one of the water molecules and the other one's accepting it. So no matter how you look at it, the reaction is the same and you have these two waters um, reacting to form H3O plus and OH minus. And you'll notice that the reaction arrow here is not equal. Um, it strongly favors the reactant. So water stay, prefers to stay together, but a small amount of it will separate into the H3O plus and the OH minus. And we can calculate or determine the concentration of both that H3O plus and OH minus in pure water to be 1 times 10 to the negative 7 molar at 25 degrees. It changes a little bit um, depending on temperature, but not much. Um, so 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 molar at 27 degrees. And if you think about it, the concentration of H3O plus and the concentration of OH minus has to be equal to each other whenever you're talking about pure water, right? Because if you have pure water, if one mo water molecule loses an H plus, it's going to become OH minus. And for every water that loses an H+, plus, another one has to gain an H+. Plus. So these two in pure water have to be exactly the same. So we can say that the ion product constant of water, which is often referred to as this Kw, is going to be H3O plus times the OH minus concentration, which is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 7 times 1 times 10 to the negative 7, which gives us this number here of 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So what this tells us is that for any aqueous solution, so any solution that's based on water, the product of H3O plus and OH minus has to equal 10 to the negative 14. Now in pure water, it's going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 7 and 1 times 10 to the negative 7. However, for other solutions that aren't pure water, this Kw still holds true, right? So this Kw still holds true. This equation still is going to be valid. And it's going to tell us that if we know the H3O plus concentration, we can figure out the OH minus concentration. And similarly, if we know the OH minus concentration, we know the H3O plus concentration. Because with pure water, they're going to be equal. Now, if you were to add a little bit of H of, uh, I want to say H3O plus, but you really would be adding like a free proton. Right, which is something that's acidic. You can increase the amount of H3O plus, but in doing so, you're going to also decrease the amount of OH minus. They're kind of like um, a seesaw. One goes up, the other goes down. Okay. So here is kind of using the this equation in action. Um, the only equation you really need to know is this Kw is equal to H3O plus times the OH minus, and you should know that this is equal equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Um, you can see down here in these blocks, it's just rearranged. So it says OH minus is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by H3O plus, or you can say that H3O plus is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by the concentration of OH minus. And that's just simply rearranging this equation up here. Okay, so in terms of taking a solution 
based on their concentration of H3O plus and OH minus, we can determine whether or not it's going to be acidic or basic or neutral. And what I want you to think of is that anytime you have H3O plus, that should you should be thinking that's acid. So think of H3O plus as an acid. Remember, acids are proton donors. This H3O plus kind of has an extra acid it can donate. Um, OH minus, you should think of as a base, right? Like NaOH, sodium hydroxide was a base, or potassium hydroxide was a base. Whenever you see that OH minus, think of it as the base. So if you have a solution and you know the concentrations of H3O plus and OH minus, and they're not equal to each other, whichever one is bigger is going to determine whether it's an acid or a base. So in other words, if you look down here, if the concentration of H3O plus is greater than the concentration of OH minus, it's going to be an acid. If H3O plus is less than OH minus, or you could say OH minus is greater than H3O plus, then it's going to be a base. All right, and that's the simple um, way to figure out if a solution is an acid or a base. And again, if they're exactly equal to each other, that's going to be the case in pure water, for instance. Um, if they're exactly equal to each other, then you have a neutral solution. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple problems in action of this. If the hydronium ion concentration in a cup of coffee is 1 times 10 to the negative 5th molar, what is the hydroxide concentration? And then is that solution acidic or basic? Well, our equation is going to be the concentration of OH minus times the concentration of H3O plus is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. That's going to be our go-to equation, right? We know that um, H3O plus is 1 times 10 to the negative 5th, so that means we can plug in here, and I'm going to say 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by the concentration of H3O plus, which is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 5th, and our answer here is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 9 molar. These concentrations that we calculate are always going to have the units of molar whenever you're using um, this equation here. All right, so we know that the concentration of OH minus is 1 times 10 to the negative 9 molar. We know that the H3O plus is 1 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. So is the solution acidic or basic? Well, in this case, H3O plus is greater than the concentration of OH minus. So this would be acidic. Um, a lot of times people will get confused because of these exponents and they'll think, oh, well, 9 is bigger than 5, so OH minus should be bigger. But remember, whenever you have a negative exponent, it's like a decimal point. So in other words, H3O plus, you would write it, that's the concentration. And then OH minus would be like that. So this number is much bigger than that number. All right, so the coffee is going to be acidic because the hydronium ion concentration is greater than the hydroxide ion concentration. Um, one thing I wanted to go over in doing this is kind of a little calculator help because a lot of people will have... Um, some problems typing this in on their calculator correctly. Most calculators have a button that says EE. -E. So for instance, on the calculator I use, there's a button that says EE. -E. Um, and what you would type would be 1 and then EE, -E, which is like saying times 10 to the, and then negative 14. And then you would say divided by 1 EE. -E negative 5. And that would get you to this answer. Um, alternatively, you could, let me clear out a little bit of room here. Um, alternatively, which also works, you just have to be super careful that you do the parentheses right. You could do um, 1 times 10 to the negative 14 in parentheses and then divided by 1 times 10 to the negative five and parentheses. So that takes a little more work, but that one will also work um, to get you to that answer. You have to make sure you use the parentheses though. 
And then the one trick I have for you um, is that your exponents should always add up to either negative 14 or negative 15. So they'll add up to negative 14 if your um, scientific notation prefixes is exactly one for both answers. Otherwise, the exponents are going to add to negative um, 15. So in this case, negative 5 plus negative 9 is equal to negative 14, um, where you can just think of it 5 plus 9 is 14. Um, so those exponents should always add up to 14 if the prefixes are 1, but usually they'll add up to 15. Um, so that's just another way you could check to make sure you're not doing anything um, crazy with your calculator.